What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to talk displacement maps. Dread Labs. So, um, I see a lot of people who don't really get displacement maps and it's quite easy frankly. So, um, just to put it really basic, um, you put a black and white PSD image uh, in and based on that image and the text or logo or whatever you want to distort uh, will displace based on the image that you put in. Let me just show you how it works because frankly it's quite easy. So I got this text here. Uh, I made it into a smart object so we can just start distorting it. I also have two images here. Uh, one of them is this um, this distorted clouds image. Um, um, so the way we make this is we're gonna go to filter, render, clouds, go to filter, liquefy, liquefy this and add some curves to it and finally increase the size a bit. And now we say this is a PSD called displacement map. And we're gonna get into our text. Go to filter, distort, displace. And the settings uh, on horizontal and vertical mostly work well in 10.10. 10. Uh, these settings you can change around and play around with, but uh, I, in my opinion the default setting mostly works fine. And now that we have this, the, uh, this text is distorted based on the image that we put in. Um, so if you bring in the image into this uh, project, uh, you can kind of see, based on the dark and light values here, um, the image will get distorted. Um, so now you might be wondering why use displacement maps. Um, and one other way to use displacement maps is to create a realistic distortion if your logo is, for example, painted on paper or uh, a wall or whatever. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So we're back at uh, square one again. I made this other displacement map. I looked up an image on Unsplash, uh, which is a, uh, of a wall, and I made it into black and white, and I put a Gaussian blur on it. And by going to Filter, Distort, Displace, and clicking our wall uh, displacement map, you can kind of have this realistic uh, distortion on text, basically. Another reason where you can work in displacement maps is by using mockups of t-shirts, for example. Uh, and let me just put up an example and show you what I mean by that. Um, so here we have an image of a trash t-shirt that I found on Creative Market. I'll put a link in the description. Let's see if we can bring in our logo and distort it along the wrinkles of the t-shirt. And let's put it here because there are a little bit more wrinkles in here. Obviously this doesn't look very good on a t-shirt, but I just want to show you how the displacement maps actually work. So I made a document that's the same size of our mockup file. I'll bring in a t-shirt by going to right click, duplicate layer, and bring it into our new file. Make the background black again. So now we have a file with our t-shirt in it, and now we're gonna go and make this into a smart object. Uh, this is so we can re-edit the Gaussian blur that we're gonna put in right now. So we're gonna go to filter Gaussian blur, and put the radius to about three. So we're going to save this as a PSD file. Back into our T-shirt file, uh, we're going to select our, we're going to select our logo. Go to filter, distort, displace. Pick our T-shirt displacement map. As you can see here, the text is actually folding with the wrinkles in here. So that's a really common way that displacement maps are being used. Uh, so the reason why we're blurring it is um, if you don't blur the file, it will detect more uh, distort. It will detect more colors in here, uh, which makes it, which makes the logo more wrinklier. Basically, if we go to blend modes and put the underlying layer here, hold other option and bring this in, you can actually see that it starts to look like this is actually printed on T-shirt here. So this was a quick video. I hope you learned something or feel inspired. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a new tutorial, please let us know in the comments or join us on Discord and I will hope to see you in the next video.